The Junior Spirit Guardian Academy's design amazed everyone who had ever seen it. The professor at the lectern reminds the students that the entrance exams for the Guardian Pet Tamer Academy are less than a week away. The teacher advises students to devote all their time to preparation in order to subsequently enter the ideal college. Sean thinks that passing the exam should not be affected in any way by the fact that it is a rolling exam. The young man remembers that just a week ago he transferred to this new body. Simultaneously with the movement, Sean also merged with all the memories that the body carries, so he knows everything about this wonderful world. This is a world where monsters run rampant and people can only survive thanks to high city walls. To fight monsters, humans evolved by taming spirit beings. This led to the emergence of spirit guardians. Guardians fight evil monsters in the wild by taming the spirit beast. The guardians not only protect the human city, but also discover places beyond it. The biggest dream for young people in this world is to become a powerful spiritual guardian. Once you reach adulthood, you are given a monster egg. By concluding a contract with this egg, you can get your first spiritual pet. However, having moved into a new body, Sean learned that the previous owner had already hatched his own monster, a little zombie. An ugly, tough, and strong monster that cannot even walk, but only jumps. Zombie pets cannot evolve. Although they have good defense, their attacks are completely useless. Sean thinks in despair that his classmates either have cheats or incredible strength, while he only has a useless jumping zombie. John, Sean's friend, reassures the guy with a laugh and says that even if he fails the exam, he can always become an excellent office worker. Sean realizes how easy it is to make fun of others when he himself has a wind wolf with high stats and the ability to evolve. Suddenly, a message appears on the visual screen, accessible to each pet owner, that the spiritual protection system has been successfully activated. Sean is delighted that his cheats have finally arrived. John, unaware of the message, persuades the guy to try hard, and then he will have a chance to enter a low-level academy. But with the system activated, Sean has big plans. Now his goal is one of the four best academies. Hearing Sean's plans, Nick, a self-confident bully, laughs and says that with such a worthless zombie, the guy has no chance. John instantly gets excited, about to lunge at Nick, but Sean tells him not to pay attention. The guy explains to his friend that now is not the time to fight with Nick. His family is the second in rank in the city. They don't need trouble before the exams. The young men silently leave the audience to the laughter and whistles of the unpleasant company. John finally makes an indecent gesture. Leaving the academy building, John says that he is going to the training room. Sean replies that he will find him there. He needs to run home. In fact, the student is eager to see what this activated spiritual guard system does. Launching the visual screen, Sean begins to make sense of the incoming information. Suddenly, the guy finds out that with this system, his worthless zombie can evolve. In this world, the growth power of tamed pets has eight levels, and as long as a soul pet evolves, its growth power will increase. The highest eighth level of growth is actually mythical. There is not a single pet in the entire Federation that has reached it. The higher the growth ability, the more talents and skills the pet has, which naturally gives it an advantage. Sean looks at his black-eyed zombie with joy. Since he can evolve, he won't be trash anymore. The guy is full of hope with a spiritual protection system. One of the best academies is now well within his reach. Suddenly, Sean remembers that the evolution of a pet requires materials, and he urgently needs to see which ones. Having opened the screen, the student reads that using the advantages of the system, he can improve his pet once without any resources and will also gain access to knowledge. Deciding not to delay until later, Sean presses the upgrade button. His zombie spins in the air, and he gradually begins to change his appearance. Sean's pet is getting more and more twisted. He begins to take on completely unexpected shapes. After the changes were completed, a spectacular, beautiful zombie girl appeared before the student. John is stunned. He expected anything, but not that his pet would turn into a luxurious girl. Looking at the girl, the guy thinks whether she is as strong as she is beautiful. Looking through the stats, Sean is pleased to note that her growth power has increased from low to normal, and she also has a skill. The guy reads that the girl's skill, Bloodlust, allows him to heal injuries and provide longer combat strength. In addition, the system makes it possible to improve the skills of the pet owner. To master spiritual skills, a spiritual messenger needs training. In current schools, only three spiritual skills are taught. Spiritual Chain, Spiritual Shield, and Spiritual Vision. Sean examines the available options, deciding what needs to be added now and what can wait. Since the pet can be mortally wounded, the guy adds the ability to instant regeneration to her. The student continues to upgrade his pet, and the zombie girl gradually takes on a terrifying appearance. Sean decides that his pet now needs a new name and decides to name her Lynn. The young man looks at the statistics. His zombies are now stronger than many. 
But in order to continue Lin's evolution, he needs to hunt more zombies. Sean decides that there is no time to delay, exams are approaching, and it's time to start hunting. The Federation in this world is not technologically weak, but it is different from the technology of previous generations. Cars and airships do not run on gasoline, but on spiritual energy, which is the driving force for everything in this world. Outside the city, there are areas where monsters are raging. Deciding to leave the city gates is comparable to suicide. Cars remain the means of transportation around the city, but if you need to get to another city, they use airships. The ship is accompanied by a powerful ambassador of the Imperial Spirit. Until it encounters a large number of monsters, the safety of passengers is guaranteed. Sean gets into a taxi and asks to be taken to the south gate. The taxi driver is perplexed and worried that the guy is driving to the gate alone. This is very dangerous. The guy looks thoughtfully out the window and thinks that danger is exactly what he needs to test his evolved pet. Outside the gates is truly deadly. There are four exits from the city, eastern, western, northern, and southern. Each gate is guarded by heavily armed soldiers to fight off the advancing monsters. Approaching the gate, Sean thinks that he will go out into the wild forest for the first time. Before, due to the lack of a powerful pet, this was impossible. The guy hands the guard a training pass, which is given to students for training in a real environment, and goes out the gate. Mostly low-level monsters live near the gate. Higher levels can be found going deeper into the wild forest. In the forest, danger can lurk at every turn, so Sean decides to call Lin. The guy tells Lin that they are going to the Grave Cargon, which is where dead skeletal monsters live. Along the way, the young man thinks that the system gave the first evolution for free, but he needs to collect resources for subsequent ones himself. For Lin's next evolution, she needs flawless bones, a heart of darkness, ten small crystals, and ten essences of bloody darkness. At the mound where Sean is heading, you can get flawless bones and small crystals. Lin calls out to the guy, but he is lost in his thoughts and only says that they are almost there. The girl does not lag behind, telling her master that she feels undead everywhere. Sean replies that everything is correct. They are the ones I will send here to hunt her. The guy says in confusion that according to the map, there should be skeletal soldiers around the mound. But for some reason, he doesn't see anyone. Suddenly, skeletons jump out of the ground and rush at Sean. The guy is horrified. He calls Lin to him and orders the skeletons to be destroyed. Suddenly, a screen appears displaying a new task, kill 20 skeleton soldiers to gain experience for the familiar. Lin, taking on a fighting form, rushes into the attack without the slightest hesitation. Sean does not have time to follow the events taking place. The zombie is so lightning fast that the guy sees only bones flying around. The guy is delighted with the girl's abilities. With one blow, she destroys four soldiers. Sean joyfully orders to destroy them all. Lin has corpse poison on her nails. It penetrates the enemy's body at the slightest scratch. But skeletons are immune to it. It doesn't affect them. Having received a message that the first task has been completed, Sean is excited to use the girl's skills further. Having received a promotion, the girl, illuminated by magical light, transforms further. Sean's familiar was promoted to the third level and received a free point as a reward. The guy is thinking about how best to use it. The student decides that it would be best to increase Lin's magic damage reduction function. The guy tells Lin that according to the map, there should be elite skeleton officers in this place, and invites her to go look for them. Suddenly, below the rock, Sean notices that some girl is already fighting with one of the officers. Taking a closer look, the guy recognizes the girl. This is Amanda, his classmate. The officer runs straight towards Amanda. She stands all alone and seems to be waiting for an attack. Letting the officer get closer, the girl pronounces a challenge and her familiar, the green dragon, appears behind her in all its glory. Amanda orders the dragon to destroy the monster, flapping its wings and it immediately attacks. The dragon, sparkling with red eyes, in a rage strikes with its paw and crushes the strong bones of the skeleton. A spiritual flame shines over the defeated enemy. Amanda takes out the bottle, opens it, and the spiritual flame, none other than the essence of these skeletons, is sucked inside. Sean, watching what is happening, understands why the girl's family is one of the three great families of the city. She is so prudent that she brought a bottle of spirit with her. Suddenly, the girl turns around and says loudly that there is no need to hide. It's better for the observer to come out. Sean is embarrassed. Amanda is the first beauty in the academy. She reached the seventh level of the first stage so early, although he himself spent six months to barely reach the second. The young man comes out from behind the shelter, and Amanda is surprised to recognize him as her classmate. The guy is surprised that she recognized him. The girl laughingly remarks that it's hard not to know a guy with a zombie incapable of development. The girl notices that the guy has no place here. It's very dangerous. Sean instantly flares up and rudely replies that it's none of her business. Amanda's familiar, sensing a threat, 
immediately rushes to the owner's defense and growls wildly at the guy. The girl laughs and calls back her green dragon. Amanda again tells Sean that it is dangerous here, and he should not come here with a helpless zombie. It is better for him to return to the city as soon as possible. The guy replies that he can take care of his own safety. There is no need to worry about him and turns around and leaves. The girl decides to follow him, suspecting that such a weakling did not just come to the mound alone. Sean notices the surveillance, but decides that leveling up is more important than some nosy girl. Suddenly, dozens of skeleton officers attack Sean from underground. Sean realizes that he has fallen into a trap. It is no coincidence that so many monsters ended up in one place at once. Amanda watches what is happening from a hiding place with alarm. The guy was so clearly looking for trouble, now he will get it. Defending himself, Sean calls Lynn for help. Seeing Lynn's new appearance, Amanda is lost. Cannot understand how this happened. Thinks that it is either a zombie with a mutation or evolution. But this simply cannot be. Meanwhile, Lynn, on Sean's orders, rushes into the attack with lightning speed. In a matter of minutes, all enemies were dealt with, and the zombie girl was noticeably gaining strength. Sean receives another task. He needs to kill a hundred skeleton officers. As a reward, he will receive an increase in strength and equipment for his familiar. The task is not easy. A crowd of angry skeletons is advancing on Sean and Amanda. The guy decides not to risk Lynn. He turns on the wild blood function. Life points are lost. But at the same time, there is a constant increase in strength and speed. Amanda watches what is happening from a hiding place in amazement. A zombie capable of sucking blood, and even wild blood. This is incredible. The zombie girl successfully copes with the skeletons, but they keep coming and coming. Sean decides it's time to use the effects of the spiritual skill and selects the spiritual chain function. The guy throws a magic chain on the skeleton, which at the same instant immobilizes the monster. Together with Lin, Sean defeats all the attacking monsters one by one. Amanda is overwhelmed by the power and functions of Sean's familiar. Even her green dragon is no match for her. There is very little left and Sean orders Lin to end the battle. With one powerful blow, the zombie girl pierces the strongest skull. Amanda is perplexed that the most ordinary loser could become her rival for entry into the best academy of spirit conquest. But the girl is not ready to just give up. She decides to train even harder to remain first. Sean examines the fallen bones and does not understand. Lin destroyed so many officers, but no bonuses fell from them. After looking through a dozen skulls, the guy notices that it is very tedious. It's a pity that there is no function for automatically selecting magic items. Suddenly, a visual screen appears on which the current needs of the owner are analyzed. A new task appears. It is proposed to increase the level to the first second stage. Upon completion, the auto selection function will be available. Suddenly, Sean notices that something is sparkling brightly under one of the skeletons. He bends down and rakes over the bones. The guy picks up a mysterious object. It is a flawless bone, one of the necessary resources for Lin's evolution. Sean remembers that there are only two resources you can get from the mound, flawless bone and a small crystal of darkness. The guy tells Lin that it's time for them to move on. There is still a lot to find, and there are a lot of tasks. A couple of hours later, having increased her strength several times, Lin smashes the skeletons with one wave of her hands. Looking at the statistics, Sean is amazed that Lin is increasing her strength so quickly. In just a few hours, she gained 80% of her original level. Lin receives a bloody rainbow robe, capable of physical and magical attacks, self-purification, and it is also impossible to destroy. Sean calls Lin and, seeing her battle-worn costume, offers to try on a new attribute. Not embarrassed by her master, Lin throws off her old clothes and puts on new ones. The guy can hardly stand it. The girl is incredibly beautiful. Sean invites Lin to try out the functions of her new clothes. The girl obeys unquestioningly. The guy watches with pleasure as a dress damaged by one of the skeletons is automatically repaired. Suddenly, a bright ray of light illuminates Lin. She received another level increase. Sean is impressed. In one day, they were able to jump two levels. Now his familiar has the fourth level of the first stage. The guy stretches tiredly, as if it was not Lin, but he who had defeated all the monsters and offers to go home. Late at night, the hero and his pet return to the southern entrance to return home to the city. Lying in bed, Sean looks at the visual screen and thinks that great changes will happen to him very soon. The young man reflects that there is very little time left before the entrance exams, during which he must have time to significantly increase Lin's level. Already falling asleep, the hero thinks that in the morning he needs to call the professor and say sick. Meanwhile, Amanda, being in the courtyard of a luxurious house, does not think about rest. The girl trains all her skills with effort. Under no circumstances should she lose her unconditional chance of entering the academy. 
Suddenly, the father approaches the girl and asks why his daughter is not sleeping at such a late time. Excitedly, Amanda tells her father that she saw an evolved zombie. The father categorically says that the girl imagined it, zombies cannot evolve. The father tells the girl that exams are undoubtedly important, but there is no need to torture yourself with training. Three days later, Sean is excited about the start of his entrance exams. Students who come to the tests are surprised to notice the airships of the Spirit Conquest Academies. The Mayor of Heavenly Lights greets the arriving guests. A representative from the Green Dragon Academy appears first and greets the mayor. The second to arrive is a representative of the White Tiger Academy. Next comes a representative from the Black Turtle Academy, who is present at the entrance exams for the first time. The mayor is pleased to welcome such young people who are so distinguished in their field. Finally, a representative from the Redbird Soul Conquest Academy arrives and is impatiently waiting for the test to begin. All the students gather on the training field. They are excited and don't know what to expect because every year the tests are different. John looks at the students in excitement. He couldn't contact Sean for several days. Did the guy really just give up the fight? Suddenly, Sean, who doesn't look like himself, approaches his friend. John attacks his friend and reproaches him for disappearing without a trace. Sean reassures his friend, saying that he was busy all this time because he was training hard. The guy confidently declares that he will certainly enter the elite academy of spirit conquest. Hearing such a daring statement, the students standing around begin to laugh loudly. No one yet knows what metamorphoses happened to Sean's pet. Sean indifferently remarks that today is the last day anyone laughed at him. The mayor appears on the training field, accompanied by the masters of the great academies. Having sat down at the podium, the mayor demands silence and announces that the entrance exams are beginning. The professor tells the students that the exam consists of two parts, survival and the secret limit. All students will have to survive in the secret limit for three days, constantly being attacked by monsters. Students who pass the first round are allowed into the second. In the second round, students are divided into groups and fight among themselves. The winners move on. The losers will only be able to enter a lower academy. The first 10 students have a chance to enter the elite academy, but even if no one passes, the first 10 will enter the high-level academy. The professor reminds that there is no need to be a hero. You need to act to the best of your ability. Life is most important. One of the students asks if it is true that you can die at the limit. The professor replies that anything can happen during the exam. Sean receives a new task from the system to pass the first stage of the entrance exam, and the reward is a crystal of spiritual power. Amanda looks around. She scans the crowd of students, but doesn't see Sean anywhere. The mayor opens the gates of the secret limit. The first round of the test is declared open. Students try to go to the secret limit as quickly as possible to find the best position. Sean is the last one to enter the portal slowly and confidently. He doesn't need a head start. The secret limit is truly dangerous. Students must fear not only monsters, but also various natural phenomena. Students through the portal find themselves at various points of the limit. Having moved to the secret limit, Sean finds himself on the top of a mountain with an excellent view. They were warned about the danger, so deciding not to risk it, the guy immediately calls Lin. Descending from the mountain, the student is perplexed. They have been walking for quite a long time, but still have not met either classmates or monsters. Suddenly, a huge bird appears above the heroes, and flapping its wings threateningly, begins to emit a heartbreaking cry. Sean, covering his ears, examines the bird. It is a steel-winged crow, but judging by the wingspan, it is still a chick. The guy orders Lin to attack the enemy. The girl immediately rushes forward. The zombie did not hurt the monster, but the bird, frightened by the powerful and fast attack, flies away. Noticing the cave, Sean decides that it would be safer to spend the next three days there. Suddenly, the terrifying cry of the steel-winged crow is heard again. If you don't get rid of it, it won't leave the heroes alone. Watching the bird, the guy realizes that it is afraid of Lin, so it does not attack, but he is the true target. The student leaves his familiar in the cave and decides to lure the bird out, using himself as bait. The guy goes deep into the thicket to lure the bird out. Noticing this, the monster quickly attacks. Fortunately, Sean is ready for the attack and instantly activates the spiritual shield function. After several attacks, the guy realizes that the bird has a very strong beak. His first stage shield will not last long. Without thinking twice, Sean immediately connects the spiritual chain and binds the bird tightly. Lin appears and kills the monster in an instant. The guy approaches the dead bird in the hope of receiving bonuses. Sean gets a feather, a claw, and a beak. These are high-level expensive resources, but for now they are useless to him. The guy picks up the carcass and tells Lin that they will have a great dinner today. Steel-winged crow meat is considered a rare delicacy. Meanwhile, all the battles from the Secret Reach are broadcast on a huge screen in the training stadium. One of the judges, watching Sean, 
notes that defeating the steel-winged crow is not so easy. Masters from the highest academies are amazed at such strength in such a young student and such an unusual familiar. The mayor looks at the data on the unusual student and his pet and suddenly jumps to his feet in amazement. The judges find out that the student's familiar is a zombie, but they cannot evolve. It is simply impossible. In the secret limit, Nick decides not to strain himself and sit out in the cave for all three days, and his familiar, a black viper, will hide his scent from the monsters. Suddenly, the guy notices smoke from the fire and wonders who came up with this, because now is the most dangerous time. At the same time, Sean enjoys delicious meat cooked over the fire. Suddenly, Lin hears strange sounds and sees ominous shadows in the bushes. A large pack of huge and terrible devilish wolves appears from the darkness. Sean is oddly glad to see them. He wants to get as much experience from battles as possible. The leader of a pack of devilish wolves is truly gigantic in size and terrifying. Having examined the wolf properly, the guy understands that he cannot be underestimated. He did not expect to attract such a large monster. Lin rushes to attack. Ordinary members of the pack pose no threat to her. While the familiar is distracted by the battle, the leader rushes towards his main target, Sean. The guy, in a panic, calls for Lin, who immediately rushes to his defense. The zombie seriously injured the leader, depriving him of an eye. The student notes with delight that his pet's abilities are simply amazing. The wolf is furious! He rushes at the girl, intending to tear her into pieces. Lin jumps high, preparing to strike a powerful blow. A second later, the wolf is dealt with. Sean approaches the dead beast to examine the body. The hero receives the heart of the devil wolf and the essence of bloody darkness, just what is needed for evolution. One of the students falls through the portal onto the examination field, screaming for help. The mayor orders the medics to examine the wounded and remove them from the field. The professor notes with regret that the students who dropped out in the first round will now only be able to lead an ordinary human life. The longer boys and girls survive in the secret portal, the greater their chances for a bright life full of dangerous adventures. Representatives of the academies are delighted with Sean's strength. Everyone now wants to get him to join them. The mayor is trying to calm the excitement around the student because the tests have just begun. Who knows how he will show himself next. The entire cave is covered in the blood of wolves. Sean fears that the smell of blood will attract many monsters, so he decides to look for another shelter. Suddenly, Lynn stops and says she feels a change. The girl shields her owner and takes a defensive pose. Suddenly, the heroes hear cries for help. One of the students runs towards them, and a huge snake is chasing him. Sean's classmate, the bully Nick, runs as fast as he can, but a huge python with poisonous scales almost catches up with him. Nick realizes that it was a huge mistake to fall asleep in the cave. The python woke up from his snoring. Nick falls to the ground, notices Sean ahead, and desperately thinks that if he fails the exam, he will take this loser with him. Suddenly, the heroes notice that Nick is running straight towards them and leading a python behind him. Pressing the emergency return button from the secret limit, Nick hopes that the huge pedo will kill his classmate. The student falls out of the portal screaming, and doctors immediately run up to him to examine him. With a crazy look, Nick looks at the huge screen, waiting to see how the python will deal with Sean. The guy understands that the python is too strong. The only sure way out is to urgently improve his skills, and he increases the spiritual chain to the second level. The student tells Lin that attacking head-on is dangerous. You need to wait for the right moment. Running to the side, Sean shouts to his familiar to avoid the deadly poison at all costs. Agile and lightning fast, Lin runs up the python's body. Once right next to the python's head, the zombie deftly dodges the acidic poison. Suddenly, the python releases a toxic mist. Sean realizes that if they want to survive, they need to act as quickly as possible. The student releases an enhanced spiritual net in an attempt to immobilize the python. The chain has noticeably strengthened. The python twitches, trying to escape, but nothing works. Sean tightens the chain on the snake and shouts to Lin that this is the best time to attack. The girl runs up and delivers just one graceful but deadly blow. The dead python falls with such force that the ground under the hero's feet shakes. Nick, in despair, does not understand how this pathetic loser was able to defeat a python with poisonous scales. The judges are perplexed. Even if the guy is a genius, he shouldn't be so strong. The mayor thoughtfully rubs his beard. If such a talented student studied at the academy, how could he not have noticed him before? Suddenly, one of the masters steps aside. Their academy must get such a student at all costs. She is going to talk to the director. For defeating the monster, Sean receives poisonous scales and a python gallbladder. The guy tells Lin that there is still a little time left, and one will reach the maximum 10th level of the first stage. They need to look for more monsters. Suddenly, the hero hears the roar of a demonic wolf and turns around sharply. Not far away, a pack of wolves surrounds Amanda and her green dragon. The girl looks around in confusion. 
it seems she has fallen into a trap. Sean thinks that the girl and the pack leader have the same level of strength, but the wolves have a clear numerical advantage. The leader of the devilish wolves howls terribly and rushes to attack. One of the wolves jumps and pierces the dragon's wing with its powerful jaws. The familiar lets out a desperate cry of pain. Amanda understands that things are bad. Her dragon is strong, but he lacks speed. And if this continues, he will simply die. The girl jumps on the back of the dragon and orders him to fly away. Suddenly, the leader makes a huge leap and flies straight towards the dragon. The girl realizes with horror that if they do not avoid the fight, she risks everything, including her own life. The girl hesitated, and at that moment, a huge wolf sinks its huge teeth into the green dragon. The dragon begins to slowly fall, and Amanda despairingly thinks that very soon she will die. Having dropped to the ground, the wolf continues to bite one after another. The dragon resists with all its strength. The girl with tears in her eyes thinks that it would be better for her to leave the test, leave the test urgently, but will not allow her green dragon to die. Suddenly, Amanda notices how the zombie girl throws the wolves in different directions. The girl is surprised to see Sean standing in front of her with his familiar. The guy notices that Amanda's green dragon is seriously injured. At this time, the judges discuss that they are somewhat disappointed in Amanda's defeat. They bet big on her. A huge, furious leader appears in all his enormous height in front of Sean and Lin. The guy doesn't think twice and turns on the wild blood function for Lin. The defeated ox flies to the side and nearly knocks Amanda and her dragon off their feet. The girl is amazed how in just a month Sean has become so strong, he selflessly saved Amanda. Sean is looking for bonuses. Amanda is perplexed why the guy pretends not to notice her. The girl thanks her classmate for saving her. In response, he advises the girl to find a safer place and rest while she has a break. The girl is embarrassed and invites the guy to go further together. The guy understands that he will be better off alone. Amanda will be a burden to him, but her dragon is seriously injured, and Sean cannot just leave her here alone. Seeing Sean's doubts, the girl offers him 100,000 to help her complete the first stage of the test. The guy thinks that with this money, he can buy a lot of resources for evolution. Sean approaches Amanda and extends his hand to her. The girl decides that he wants to pull her towards him and protect her from everyone. Amanda embarrassedly begins to mutter that she is not ready for such manifestations of feelings, that they do not know each other well yet. The young man looks at the girl in bewilderment, continues to extend his hand, and asks to give him a card with 100,000 federal points. Amanda has never experienced such awkwardness before, saying that she did not take the card with her to the tests, and promises to settle accounts with Sean at the end of the test. The guy calmly invites the girl to sign a debt contract. He is not used to trusting people at their word. Having received the girl's signature, Sean joyfully says that until the end of the test, Amanda is completely under his protection. The student says that once he collects all the bonuses, they will go look for a safe place. The judges were nervous as they watched the situation. They didn't think Sean would be able to turn the tide. The master from the Redbird Academy reports that despite the fact that only girls are recruited into their academy, they decided to make an exception for Sean. One of the judges is surprised that the guy has problems with federal glasses, to which the mayor explains that the student is not from a noble family. The masters are shocked. An ordinary guy not from an important family has reached the second level of the first stage. This is simply incredible. Having found a more or less safe place, Sean immediately falls asleep. But Amanda is not in the mood for sleep. The girl disturbs the guy, says that she can't sleep, and asks Sean to talk to her. Seeing the guy's reluctance, he offers 5,000 points for the conversation. Sean immediately asks what she wants to discuss. The girl is interested in how he became so strong and why his familiar does not look like an ordinary zombie. The student evasively answers that Lina has mutated. He understands that by talking about the system that contributed to evolution, he will cause a scandal throughout the entire Federation. The girl says, That with level 9, Sean can get into any academy. I wonder which one he chose. Sean admits that he has not thought about it yet. It is important for him to pass the entrance exams, and only then he will decide. The guy, in order to avoid further questions, says that if Amanda has eaten and rested, then it's time to move on. The girl doesn't want to go, but Sean understands that while the bulk of the students are hiding, now is the time to hunt and level up. And if the girl doesn't want to, then he goes alone. Amanda thinks the guy is just crazy, but she feels much safer with him, so she quickly catches up with him. Suddenly, the young people are attacked by two level 7 devil monkeys. Summoning Lin, who is always ready to defend, Sean rushes to the attack. Finally, in the morning, students receive notifications that the first stage of the exam is over. Sean stretches tiredly and reminds Amanda of the promised 100,000 for protection and 5,000 for conversation. The guy is in a hurry to the portal. He still needs to prepare for the second stage, 
but first he needs to have a good rest. Coming out of the portal, Sean sees John rushing towards him, who is in a hurry to share the joy of the completed stage. Seeing that Sean is in perfect order, he reassuringly says that the disqualification is not so terrible. The main thing is that his friend is not injured. Sean boastfully opens the screen showing the positive stage result and smirks. Suddenly, the mayor himself approaches the students who came out of the portal and congratulates them on their successful results. Mike, the top-ranked student at the academy, respectfully thanks the mayor. The man asks the guy to say hi to his father and advises him to have a good rest before the second stage. The mayor approaches Sean, he wants to see the new celebrity in person. Mike is carefully watching the conversation between the mayor and Sean. The guy is not as simple as everyone thought at first glance. Once at home, Sean once again thinks that if it weren't for his amazing activation system, he would hardly have made it out of the first stage alive. The guy looks at the resources obtained during the last test. They will be very useful to him. A message immediately comes that the guy's account has received 105,000 from Amanda. The young man is delighted. With it, he can buy everything he needs for Lin's evolution. For completing the stage, Sean receives a spirit crystal. He has several of them, which means he can sell the extra ones and earn a lot of points from them. The student feels very hungry, and since he now has a lot of points, he can afford a small feast. Suddenly, Sean gets the idea to invite John and Amanda to an impromptu feast. Amanda is taking a bath, taking a break from all the adventures, her phone rings, and when she answers, the girl recognizes Sean. The guy invites her to dinner, offering to celebrate her successful completion of the exam. The girl happily agrees. Meeting with a friend, John wonders why Sean suddenly decided to have dinner in such a luxurious place. Sean tells his friend that they will not be alone. The guy is surprised. He didn't know that Sean had other friends besides him. A taxi stops and the first beauty of the course, Amanda, gets out. John cannot utter a word from amazement. Sean introduces his friend to Amanda, in case she hadn't noticed him either before. The young people go up to the restaurant. The manager runs out and respectfully greets Miss Amanda. Sean orders the most luxurious dishes and gladly invites his friend not to deny himself anything, because today, he pays for everyone. At dinner, Amanda asks Sean not to take into account the money paid to her. She admits that she is glad to be the young man's friend. At Nick's family home, servants ask his father how a young man can take the place of the young master of the house if he failed to enter a higher academy. The servants are afraid that the place will go to Nick only because he is the owner's son, and not because of his talents. Nick's father silences everyone with a gesture. He has already made his decision, despite the fact that the young man is his only son. Nick tries to justify himself by saying that he met a scary python. He is not a useless loser at all. The father interrupts the young man in a rage. He announces that the place of the young master of the family will be transferred to the young talent in the direct line of succession. Nick is terrified. Without the status of a young master, he will lose everything. The young man blames Sean for all his failures. In impotent rage, he threatens to take his life. The second day of entrance exams arrives. Students gather at the exam field. The mayor congratulates the students on passing to the second round of tests. Today, they will have to establish their place in the ranking through a duel. The man advises the students to give their best, demonstrate all their abilities, and tells the details of the second stage. Opponents are chosen at random, and the loser of the duel is eliminated from the challenge. Sean recalls that once the enemy loses the strength to fight, he cannot be attacked. But very often, every year, someone is seriously wounded or maimed. For the first time, the guy receives six tasks from the system at once, and the total rewards can be summed up. Suddenly, Sean hears that he is urgently called to one of the dueling rings. The guy runs into the ring. The judge says that next time, if they can't find him for a long time, he will be disqualified. Seeing his rival Rich, Sean realizes that he has never heard of him and has no idea what his powers are. Rich summons his familiar, a huge one-horned unicorn. Sean calls upon Lin. He is ready for battle. He wants to demonstrate all the abilities of his familiar. The audience is perplexed. They are amazed by the beauty of the zombie girl and cannot understand whether it is a familiar or a person. Rich, confident that he is facing another straggler, confidently orders the rhinoceros to begin the attack. A huge beast, full of rage, rushes straight towards the fragile Lin. Sean sees that his opponent has decided to confidently demonstrate his strength and orders his zombie to attack mercilessly. Lin rushes towards her opponent with lightning speed. The girl grabs the beast by the horn and easily lifts it into the air. Those watching understand that behind the appearance of the fragile girl lies superhuman strength. Swinging, Lin throws his huge opponent. The rhinoceros flies far out of the ring. The judge declares Sean the winner, and Rich is eliminated from the second round of challenges. The losing young man wonders how he could lose, since his opponent was always the laggard. 
Sean, having heard the words of his former rival, notices that no one is immune from defeat. And if you try hard, even the laggards become leaders. Having won the battle, Lynn gains the missing points and her level rises to 10th. Sean looks through the incoming messages. As soon as his pet rises one more level, the guy will be able to sign a contract with another familiar. Suddenly, John approaches the guy. He is badly injured. Sean is worried that it will be difficult for him to fight in the next round. The start of the second stage of duels is announced, where they will fight for 21 places. New rival Neil, considering the hero much weaker than himself, suggests that he immediately surrender in order to avoid unnecessary injuries. Sean advises his opponent not to be so self-confident. The round will show who is weak and who is not. Neil's father is sitting on the podium. He, like his son, believes that the unknown opponent is too weak. There is no need to worry about the outcome. Neil calls on his familiar, the blue bird, and sending him into battle, shouts that now it is too late to beg for mercy. Sean, calling upon Lynn, tells her that the flying familiar is the nastiest type. In order to launch an attack, you need to wait for the right moment. The opponent turns on the wing attack function and razor-sharp feathers fly at the heroes. Sean activates the spirit shield, realizing that the opponent is counting on an easy victory if he immediately attacks the spirit conqueror. In the stands, Neil's father looks on with satisfaction at the powerful blow and notes that with such abilities, his son will never lose the battle. To blind his opponent and his familiar, Sean orders Lin to activate the blood mist. The blue bird, with powerful flapping of its wings, is trying to dispel the fog, behind which nothing can be seen. Sean realizes that the maneuver was a success and instantly releases the spiritual chain. The chain entangles the bird, frightening the familiar and its owner, at which point Sean orders Lin to attack. A girl hidden in the fog suddenly appears right behind Neil and prepares to attack. Tightening the chain ever tighter, Sean invites his opponent to come down, because even his flying familiar will not be able to escape from the second level chain. Sharply jerking the chain, the guy forcefully throws the blue bird to the ground. Neil's father jumps up in amazement and concern for his son. To the astonished exclamations of the audience, Sean smugly leaves the ring as a winner. Masters from the great academies are increasingly impressed by the boy's abilities but believe that the young man is acting too self-confidently and may ultimately end in failure. One of the masters believes that Sean is an excellent strategist. Most likely, he increased the level of his spiritual chain specifically to fight flying familiars. The duels are over. Both participants were knocked out in the last round, so only 20 winners continue the trials. Sean's new rival turns out to be Anna. The guy decides that if she doesn't have a flying pet, he can easily deal with her. The girl summons a familiar, a huge ice bear. Sean is surprised. The ice bear is very rare, and he is already an adult. Familiars with ice magic have an innate advantage. The guy calls for Lin. It seems that no one can surprise or scare this girl. Anna sends her furious bear to attack. Her opponent is not far behind and orders Lin to take care of the bear. The rival notices how fast the zombie girl is and orders the bear to freeze her. The bear releases an icy mist. Sean is truly delighted that the familiar has fully mastered elemental magic. Lin is very fast, so she easily dodges the deadly fog. Not seeing the result, Anna changes the attack and orders the bear to begin an attack with an ice wave. The monster, as Sean expected, runs straight at him. To protect himself from the attack, the guy turns on the spiritual shield function. Suddenly, from the very first attack, the shield cracks. The first level is too weak against such a monster. The bear was distracted by the owner's attack and was not prepared for a sudden zombie attack. With one powerful blow, Lin dispatches his opponent. Anna is frightened by the strength of her rival's familiar, but she does not intend to give up so easily. Realizing that she can no longer count on her bear, the girl releases the spiritual chain, intending to fight to the last. The chain binds Lin, preventing her from moving and attacking the enemy. Anna pulls the chain, wants to attract the zombies to her and attack her with the bear. Pulling on the chain with all her might, the girl realizes that she cannot pull Lin to her. Sean mockingly says that his rival's spiritual chain is too weak to cope with his familiar and immediately orders Lin to attack. The zombie breaks the chain in one motion and grabs the bear, ending the battle. The spectators in the stands are amazed at the strength of Lin, who threw the bear out of the ring with her bare hands. Anna's father, watching the battle, realizes that everyone initially underestimated Sean, considering him to be behind. The defeated Anna extends her hand to Sean and says that she will watch his further battles with interest. The guy answers the handshake and says that he was glad to fight such a strong opponent. Sean receives a message that he has made it to the top 10 rankings and is rewarded with a body enhancement feature. Having launched the resulting function, the guy is surprised to realize that the pain in his body has disappeared, and he feels much better. After a while, the semifinals begin, and opponents are randomly selected. Tom is announced as the hero's opponent in this battle. 
Sean has heard that he is strong enough, but does not consider him dangerous to himself. Tom summons his familiar, a fearsome undead soldier. Sean calls Lynn, eagerly awaiting the start of the battle with the same zombie as his pet. Tom is clearly wary of his opponent and sends his familiar into a melee attack, hiding behind a spiritual shield in the meantime. Sean is thinking about how to quickly deprive the enemy of his defense and deal with his familiar. Tom didn't expect that the enemy had a higher level spiritual chain that could bind his undead soldier. Lin instantly attacks the immobilized soldier, ruining his chances of victory. Tom understands that it is pointless to continue the battle and admits defeat. Tom's father is shocked. The fight is over in two minutes. The opponent has defeated the enemy with one blow. New rival Mike confidently declares that in previous battles, Sean was simply lucky, but now the guy's luck has run out. Mike calls his stone general, intending to make a terrifying impression. Sean thoughtfully examines the stone familiar and thinks that this time Lynn won't be able to suck out her life force. She needs to come up with something else. First of all, Mike orders his general to build a stone wall around him so that the enemy's familiar, who does not have an elemental attack, cannot reach him. The audience is perplexed. Mike's trick looks too cowardly, and besides, he is driving himself into a trap. Hiding behind blocks of stones, Mike orders the general to show all his power. The familiar attacks, huge stones fly, threatening to crush opponents. Sean releases a spiritual chain, hoping to immobilize the stone general. The guy understands that the familiar has a very large amount of force. Even with a second level chain, he will not be able to move it. The student is lost for a moment. Lin's usual attacks on the stone will not work. He urgently needs to come up with something else. The zombie delivers powerful lightning strikes, but does not cause any harm to the enemy. The general tries to deal with Lin, bringing down his stone fists on her, but the girl is much faster and easily avoids it. Mike decides to show the full power of his familiar and orders him to transform. Suddenly, a deafening explosion is heard in the ring. Pieces of stones fly in all directions. Instead of a huge stone general, a humanoid robot appears. Casting aside his bulky form, the general becomes stronger and much faster. Sean orders Lin to test his powers first. Having simultaneously launched an attack, the stone general and the zombies rush into a head-on collision. Opponents crash into each other with such force that sparks fly around and a deafening roar is heard. The general flies to the side, his huge fist shattered after colliding with Lin. Mike, in despair, thinks that the stone general cannot lose in strength. Despite serious damage, he orders his familiar to attack. Sean, no longer doubting his victory, orders Lin to end the duel. The girl runs up and pushes the robot with force, throwing it over the ring. Without allowing the enemy's familiar to get to his feet, Lin delivers a devastating blow. The badly damaged general falls to the ground with a terrible crash, the battle is over. The Academy Masters continue to watch Sean, surprised at how quickly his familiar is gaining strength. The winning guy receives a message from the system that he took third place in the ranking, and as a reward, he receives a flying familiar egg. Meanwhile, Amanda battles Megan, a rival on a huge bird. The girl noticeably lags behind and realizes that her affairs are bad. Megan orders her Hawk Vortex King to use all his abilities. Huge hurricane pillars appear around Amanda and her green dragon. The wounded green dragon does not give up, lets out a menacing roar, but his strength is already running out. A few minutes later the fight ends, Megan and her hurricane hawk win. Amanda is very upset, but her wise father points out that it is okay to lose from time to time, and despite the defeat, Amanda performed well. Sean and Megan reached the finals. Climbing into the ring, the young man plans to avenge his girlfriend's defeat. Before the final battle begins, the judge announces that, among other things, the winner will receive special awards from the Academy Director and the Mayor. Sean summons his zombie beauty, setting himself up for the final battle. Megan calls on her hawkish whirlwind king. She is determined to win. The guy notices that the hawk king of the whirlwind has managed to evolve, so it will be much more difficult to cope with him than with the previous flying familiar. Megan orders the hawk to attack, showing no mercy over rivals. The bird, when attacking, creates hurricane whirlwinds. Sean is forced to call on a spiritual shield for protection, and asks Lin to come up with something against the strong wind. Megan sees that the opponent has a level 2 shield, changes her attack and orders her familiar to use high-speed wind projectiles. The attacking bird pelts its opponents with truly powerful air currents that form a dense fog. Suddenly, hidden in a dense fog, Lin jumps out right behind Megan and prepares to attack her directly. Realizing that she has no chance of resisting a direct attack from zombies, Megan admits defeat. Murr is impressed by Lin and Sean's abilities, and applauds his victory with pleasure. The Academy Masters are impressed by such a quick and effective completion of the tests. The duel is over. The second stage of the examination tests is over. Megan takes second place. Sean takes first place. 
The young man thinks with satisfaction that the ordeal is finally over. He is really very tired. Amanda approaches the guy and sincerely congratulates him on his victory. John congratulates his friend on his victory. The professor comes up, congratulating the guy, and says that he glorified not only their course, but the entire Academy of Heavenly Lights. Suddenly, Sean receives a message that for winning the exam, he will receive the talent of resurrection. The guy thinks about it. The talent he received is very interesting, but it looks like Lynn won't have much use for it. The mayor announces that the names of all the students selected by the four great academies of spirit conquest will now appear on the screens. Suddenly, everyone notices that Sean was chosen by each of the four academies, something that has never happened in the entire history of the trials. The visual screen asks each selected student to select the academy they would like to attend. Suddenly, a representative from the Green Dragon Academy offers Sean to receive 5% more materials and the opportunity to hit the secret limit three times a year if the guy chooses their academy. On behalf of the White Tiger Academy, 8% of the resources and a secret limit of five times a year are offered. The Black Turtle Academy representative offers 10% of resources and a secret limit of five times a year. Suddenly, the master adds that Amanda will also study at their academy, so they cannot part with the girl. The young people are embarrassed. They did not want their friendship to be shown in such a light in front of everyone. The last to stand is Lola, a representative of the Redbird Academy, offering 15% more resources and visiting the limits once a month. In addition, Lola adds, Sean will be the first and only student at the Academy since its founding. The guy thinks that visiting the limits 12 times a year will significantly help him in obtaining resources and increasing his level. Sean decisively selects Redbird Academy from the list on the screen. John congratulates his friend and says with envy that being the only guy among a sea of girls is a very attractive prospect. Lola approaches her friends and congratulates Sean on the right choice. The master tells the winner that he has a day to get ready, and tomorrow evening their airship will be waiting for him at the Eastern Gate. Their former professor approaches the guys and tells them that Sean is expected at the mayor's office. In the office, the mayor congratulates the hero on his impressive victory and admits that the guy did not disappoint him. As a representative of the academy, the mayor gives Sean a card with 300,000 federal points and gives him a box with a gift. The guy opens the box and sees that it contains an eternal bone, one of the rarest high-level resources for evolution. Sean is amazed. This is the top material that falls from the strongest undead. The mayor hopes that the day will come very soon when the gift will be useful to the young man and he will be able to glorify their academy even more. After seeing the guy off, the mayor's assistant is surprised because this bone was the man's treasure. But the mayor replies that this guy's future is priceless. John and Sean are chatting lightheartedly discussing future prospects when Amanda approaches them. The girl once again congratulates the guy on achieving his goal and entering the Redbird Academy. Sean, not suspecting anything wrong, congratulates his friend on being accepted into the Black Turtle Academy. Suddenly, Amanda abruptly leaves, furiously wishing one last time for the success of the new academy. The young man is surprised by his friend's strange behavior, not even realizing that she really wanted to be in the same academy with the guy. The next night, Sean arrives at his new academy's airship. Lola tells the guy that the Redbird Academy is located in the south of the city. While they fly, the guy can relax and enjoy truly stunning views. Suddenly, an alarmed captain of an airship approaches the master. Something has clearly happened. The captain reports that the airship is surrounded by a flock of flying monsters. Their individual energies are quite weak, but the number is alarming. The girls don't understand where so many monsters came from on their way. Lola orders the captain to prepare the airship for defense. A spiritual shield appears above the airship, which protects the ship from attack by crows. The ship's captain orders all spirit conquerors to report to the cockpit and prepare for battle. Sean, running to the pilot's call, meets his former rival Anna, who also entered the Redbird Academy. The students come running onto the deck. Lola orders them to summon their familiars. This is an excellent chance for beginners to practice. At the call of their masters, Lynn and the Ice Bear instantly appear. The bear, remembering his defeat, growls aggressively. Anna calms the pet. Now the zombie is not his enemy. Sean looks thoughtfully out the windows. Although these crows have a low level, there are a lot of them. The guy receives a system task. He needs to destroy as many crows as possible in 10 minutes. The reward will be received depending on the result. The hero rejoices. An excellent task for leveling up and a chance to prove himself. Sean sends Lin on the attack, ordering her to kill as many crows as possible. These monsters are too weak compared to the zombie girl. She deals with them without visible effort. Suddenly, Anna notices some strange movement right on the airship. A moment later, the Black Crow King, a very dangerous opponent of the second stage, appears right above the ship. 
Sean decides that if he destroys the king, he will receive a more serious reward, and if he kills the leader, then new crows will no longer fly. The guy orders Lin to attack the Black Crow King. Seeing what is happening, Lola orders Sean to recall his familiar. She assures the guy that the zombie is not strong enough to cope with the king. Realizing that Sean is not going to listen to her, the master calls on his familiar, which happens quite rarely. A fire kite of the seventh stage appears above the ship in all its glory. The students are amazed by the beauty and power of the bird. Seeing a kite, all the crows begin to fly away for fear of being burned to ashes. Lin continues to attack the crows using a poison attack, seeing that the birds are flying away. Sean orders the girl to catch up with the king. The birds are too fast. Lin misses the king. The students rejoice at the escape of the birds, and only the guy is disappointed. The system informs Sean that as a reward for completing the task, he receives experience crystals and growth crystals. The flock is driven off and the pilot orders the students to return to their seats and rest while they can. Looking at the resulting crystals, Sean realizes that with them, Lin will finally be able to evolve. Deciding not to procrastinate, the guy finds the desired function and starts the process. Sean watches the evolution with interest, wondering how much stronger his zombie will become. Looking through the characteristics, the guy reads with delight that Lin now has a flight function and blood control magic, and now he also has access to the auto-selection function. Suddenly, a mysterious box appears in front of the student, a reward for completing a stage of evolution. Upon opening the box, Sean receives a talent card that allows him to copy all the talents his familiar has. The guy is delighted. No one else in the union has such a card. He will now have the same abilities as Lin. Deciding to immediately try out the card, the guy starts copying talents. Moments later, Sean finally receives the second familiar's egg. The guy makes a pact with the egg with his blood and orders the familiar to awaken. Suddenly, the entire ship is illuminated by a blinding explosion of fiery light. The frightened people think that Lola has released her fiery kite again. A beautiful divine phoenix of epic level appears in all its glory before the new owner. After examining his new pet, Sean says that he will name him Fox, to which the bird suddenly agrees. Soon the airship lands in front of the Redbird Academy building. Lola tells Sean that since he is the only guy at the academy, they have prepared a separate villa for him to live in. A car stops in front of the teacher and student, which the director sent specifically to meet the new student. Sean gets into the car, he needs to take his things and goes to a meeting with the director. News immediately spreads at the academy that a guy will now study with them. Lola takes Sean to the director's office and tells him that they have arrived. The director, a spectacular lady in a strange mask, greets the guy kindly and says that she has heard about his abilities. Lola consults with the director in which class to assign the guy. The lady announces that he will study in the Red Bird class. On the way to the classroom, Lola explains that the Red Bird class is an elite course for which the best students from all over the Federation are selected. Sean enters the classroom. All eyes are fixed on the guy. The girls begin to actively gossip. The student sits down at his desk, embarrassedly thinking that here it is unlikely that he will be able to remain as invisible as in the previous academy. The teacher, Miss Smith, comes into the classroom and explains that she is in charge of the daily lessons, but another teacher will conduct the training. Miss Smith approaches Sean. The guy ends up in the first training group. His teacher will be Lola. The girls in the class are amazed because Lola no longer takes training groups. Is it really because of Sean that they made an exception? Lola welcomes her group. She will now be their leader for the rest of the training. The master is sure that since the students are in such an elite class, they have already learned the necessary theory so they can immediately move on to training. The teacher approaches Sean and, fulfilling his promise, hands him a map to the secret limit, which he can visit once a month. Lola says that there are all sorts of useful things in the limit. It is the fastest way to increase strength. Not far from the academic building, there is a hall of secret limits, a place where every student dreams of going, but only a select few have access. The guard guarding the entrance to the hall asks what the new guy forgot in the secret confines. Sean shows the guard his pass. She is surprised, but has no right not to let him in. The girl shows the guy the hall, says that each door leads to different levels of limits, and advises the new guy to start from the lowest. The guard warns the young man that the boundaries are not safe. If the student fails to get out in time, he risks staying there forever. Sean thoughtfully examines the portal to the limit of the second level, and cannot decide whether he can hold out there for three days. A task comes from the system to explore the secret limit of the second level. The guy has no choice, and he boldly enters the portal. Having emerged from the portal, Sean immediately notices monsters of the first and second levels. The student calls on his two familiars. It's time to do important things. Suddenly, Fox asks what this place is, which is not at all like his home. The guy explains to the Phoenix where they are and what they need to do. 
Fox notices monsters swarming on the ground and rushes to attack them. The phoenix flaunts like a small one in the sky, shimmering with fire. Sean notices that with this behavior, he will attract all the monsters of the secret limit to them. The first monster was not long in coming. The alpha of wild wolves was approaching the heroes. Having received the task, Sean tells the phoenix that he alone must cope with a pack of wild wolves, and he and Lin will not interfere. Fox makes a sharp turn and flies straight towards the Alpha. Suddenly, the guy remembers that the Alpha has fire magic and will most likely try to burn the Phoenix. Falk finds himself engulfed in a cloud of fire. The guy and the zombies froze in anticipation. Seeing the Phoenix, Sean is relieved to remember that his bird is immune to fire of any level, so the Alpha will soon come to an end. The student orders his familiar to use Devil Flame and attack the wolf. Everything around is filled with a frightening green flame. Sean and Lin watch in fascination as the flock burns along with the leader. The guy receives a message that the claws and heart of a wild wolf, as well as an entry-level fire crystal, were automatically selected for the task. Flying after Sean and Lin, Fox grumpily reports that he is tired after the fight and needs rest. Meanwhile, Miss Smith flies into Lola's office and asks in bewilderment how she could allow a new student to go alone to the secret limit. Lola calmly explains that for such a talent as Sean, the limit of the first level does not pose any danger, to which Miss Smith replies that the guy has gone to the second level. Lola thoughtfully reports that the guy is not only talented, but also self-confident. Miss Smith is not going to argue. When she leaves, she informs Lola that in case of problems, Lola will be the one to talk to the director. Suddenly, Lynn stops and, pointing to the side, tells Sean that she senses danger. The heroes are too far away and the guy can't see what kind of monsters are ahead. The guy comes up with the idea that while sitting on Fox, he can fly closer and see what's going on there. Sitting on the Phoenix, the guy orders it to accelerate and fly to the scene. Flying closer, Sean sees that the fiery lions are hunting the earth-shaking bulls. The guy is puzzled. At this limit, the monsters are too strong, deciding not to risk it. He wants to watch from the side how the battle will end. Suddenly, the young man notices that the monsters of the second stage can attack with elemental magic, and their strength is not small. Student orders Lin to take advantage of the turmoil and attack, sparing no one. While the girl rushes to attack below, Sean orders Fox to attack from above, then not a single monster will have a chance. After passing through the next stage of evolution, even such monsters as fire lions pose no difficulties for Lin. Suddenly, the guy notices that the zombie has burned her hand quite badly, but fortunately, it has the ability to regenerate. The phoenix spreads its wings and flies above, watching with interest as the zombie girl fights monsters. Sean turns to Fox, saying that he will never level up if all the enemies are dealt with by Lin alone. Meanwhile, at the Black Turtle Academy, Amanda hears rumors that Sean went alone to the secret limit of the second level on the first day of school. The girl is sincerely worried about her friend. The guy is gaining strength too quickly. Sean dines on bull meat and tells his familiars that they should not waste time. They will rest a little and move on. Fox grumpily replies that, unlike zombies, he is tired and needs proper rest. Suddenly, a guy and a girl notice some strange glow nearby. They decide to come closer and see if this is some kind of new bonus. Seeing the unusual shiny fruit, Sean tells Lin that for some reason the system does not recognize it, but he wants to pick it. Suddenly, Lin tries to intercept the owner's outstretched hand. From the bushes, guarding the mysterious fruit, a two-headed python rises to its full gigantic height. Sean instantly summons a spiritual chain in hopes of immobilizing the snake for a subsequent attack. With surprise, the guy sees that he cannot tie a boa constrictor with his second-level chain. The guy calls on Fox, and the phoenix attacks the python with fire to distract attention. Having activated the function of the devil's flame, the phoenix attacks the snake, burning everything around. After a couple of moments, the huge two-headed python is defeated, and the young man makes his way to the mysterious fruit. Sean picks the fruit. He is sure that such a rare fruit will definitely be useful to him. It's not for nothing that he was guarded by such a monster. In the system, the guy learns that this is the fruit of the dead spirit, a high-level material necessary for the next stage of Lin's evolution. The student is so excited about the new bonuses that he doesn't want to waste a minute of time in the secret limit. The days pass very fruitfully. On the first day, the heroes fight a flock of flying monsters. On the second day, a battle with four-armed gorillas ensues. On the third day, noticeably tired, Sean barely manages to call on his familiars for help, escaping from a horde of demonic monkeys. During the days spent in the limit, the young man promotes Lin to the second level of the second stage and Fox to the third level of the second stage. Having received a special signal, Sean regretfully thinks that time is up and it's time to return. Miss Smith informs the director that the secret forest in the limit has been burned out by hellfire. The vegetation has been seriously damaged. 
The teacher says that only one student, Newbie Sean, falls within this limit. The director thoughtfully orders the limit to be closed and a restoration team to be sent there. The woman says that she will not punish Sean. She has other plans for him. Walking down the street, the guy comes across curious glances everywhere and constantly hears whispers behind him. He is not used to such attention. A message comes that for passing the secret limit, the student receives the eye of truth and crystals of spirit and experience as a reward. Sean meets Lola. The master reports that the director has decided to transfer the guy to the second year. The girl hands the guy a map and business card, informing him that since the practice will now take place more often, the guy needs to prepare resources and equipment. On the card, there is a reward for entering the academy. On the business card, there is a plan of how to get to the best store in the city, where the student can buy everything he needs. Having wandered around the city, Sean finally finds the Sky Pavilion, impressive in its size. Entering the store, the guy asks the seller where he can sell his extra resources. The salesman angrily announces that the store only serves academy students, and since Sean is clearly not a girl, he needs to leave the store. Suddenly, Nikki, the young owner of the store, intervenes in the conversation and confirms that the guy is indeed a student at the academy. Nikki orders the saleswoman to apologize to the student and continue to monitor the news in the city. The saleswoman begins to apologize with such desperation that the young man becomes embarrassed and wants to quickly get down to business. In her office, Nikki tells Sean that she is also a third-year student at the academy. The girl invites the guy to lay out all his extra resources and promises to give him a good price for them. Sean enthusiastically dumps out a whole mountain of various items accumulated over the entire time spent in the secret limit. Among the objects, Nikki notices an emerald pearl, which she has been looking for for a long time and which she needs for the evolution of the vine. The owner orders the saleswoman to evaluate all the items and give Sean a good reward. Leaving the pavilion, the girls see off the student and promise that all purchases will be delivered soon. Hurrying to class and lost in his thoughts, the guy does not notice that Jess, a very aggressive girl, is blocking his way. Without saying a word, the girl suddenly attacks the guy. He defends himself, but cannot understand what is happening. The young man prefers to flee. Fights in the first days of training are not part of his plans. Jess shouts after him that if he sees the guy again, he won't like it enough. Running up to Lola, a breathless Sean tells how he encountered some crazy woman. The teacher grins and advises the guy to get used to being the center of attention. A beautiful young girl approaches. Lola introduces the student to his new supervisor, Amelia. The girl looks at Sean without hesitation, coming to the conclusion that he is really cute. The rumors do not lie. Amelia leads the guy to the classroom, where she plans to introduce him to new classmates. Three girls enthusiastically greet their new classmate. Sean is perplexed. They seem very strange to him and are too happy about his appearance. Through the eye of truth, Sean learns that his classmate Bella is ranked first in the course and asks if he can fight her. There is laughter, Amelia asks Bella to tell her about the rules of the second year. The girl begins to explain that the guy needs to be in the top 10 to challenge her to a duel, and he's not even ranked yet. The guy is completely confused. This whole rating system is too confusing. Suddenly, the voice of a recent acquaintance of Jess is heard, who invites the hero to fight. If the guy wins, he takes her third place in the ranking. If he loses, he leaves the academy. Sean is confused. He didn't expect to see this crazy woman again, but fighting her in a duel is a great idea. The guy boldly announces that he accepts the challenge. Jess summons a level 7 second stage Thunder Bear, which is a very serious opponent. Sean calls Lin, worried that a Thunder Fist with an illusion could make things much more difficult. Jess ironically asks if Sean will summon a second familiar. It is unlikely that a humanoid zombie will be able to cope with her bear. Young people send their pets to attack, ordering them to fight with all their might. Lin flies around the bear like lightning, striking him countless times, but he is so thick-skinned that he does not receive a scratch. Seeing the zombie's speed, Jess orders his familiar to use thunder armor. Immediately, a large flurry of energy forms around the bear. Classmates discuss that this armor is not only good protection, but can also injure an opponent if he touches it. Lin is not stopped by the armor. She still diligently throws punches. A zombie, in an attempt to attack, touches the force field with her hands. She receives an electric shock, and her hands hang like whips. But few people know that along with the stage of evolution, Sean's familiar received the ability to supergenerate. Jess realizes that she clearly underestimated Sean and needs to make every effort to win the fight. The girl secretly summons a second familiar, an illusory lizard that not everyone can see. While Jess was busy with the lizard, Lin took down the Thunder Bear in several attacks. Nikki, who appeared on the site, knows about the lizard and thinks with condemnation that mocking the weak is one thing, but taking advantage of numerical superiority is dishonest. 
Jess, seeing that the lizard has reached Sean, orders it to finish him off. Unexpectedly for everyone, the guy deftly dodges the attack. Jess is furious. Her opponent couldn't see her lizard, how could he escape? Sean makes no secret and openly states that his eye of truth always remains open. The guy decides to end the battle spectacularly and calls on his divine phoenix. Jess realizes that she cannot stand against such a familiar and tries to recall her lizard. Too late, Fox notices his victim and releases fiendish flames. The phoenix has gone wild. Its flames threaten not only to destroy the opponent, but also to catch other students. Jess falls to her knees, her familiars defeated. Sean tries to calm Fox down, ordering him to stop and not use his powers without orders. Jess admits defeat. Now the guy honestly takes her third place in the ranking. Later, she will give him all her materials. The students admire Sean. He rightfully received his place in the academy. But owning such powerful familiars is scary. A message from the system arrives. For third place in the ranking, the guy receives a mysterious item as a reward. Suddenly, the guy is surrounded by fans. Everyone wants to know how to become so strong in such a short time. Suddenly, Lola and Amelia call out to Sean and ask the guy to come to them. Lola asks the guy when he will receive the Divine Phoenix and why he didn't tell anyone about it. The guy is confused and says that this happened just recently. The master informs Sean that Amelia has received a new task and he and his classmates are going with her. Running home to get his things, Sean can't hold back and opens a box with a mysterious item. It's crystallized phoenix essence. A message immediately arrives that the guy's account has received money from Jess. Sean decides to make peace with the girl after returning. The student approaches the classroom, where the guy's classmates are already waiting for Amelia. Sean does not abandon his idea to challenge Bella to a duel in order to take first place in the ranking. Suddenly, the conversations are interrupted by Amelia approaching and saying that it's time for them to leave. 